now, Pursuit. If your blood is not getting enough iron, you look pale, feel run down, and an added burden is placed on your heart. It has to work harder to keep you going. So take an iron tonic, ironized yeast. Its regular use gives you the vital iron you need in abundance. Pallor and tiredness may be due to other causes, so to be sure of your condition, see your doctor. But if you're simply not getting enough iron, see how regular use of ironized yeast tablets brings back your old-time energy and vigor. Pursuit. A criminal strikes and fades quickly back into the shadows of his own dark world. And then, the man from Scotland Yard, the famous inspector Peter Black, and the dangerous, relentless pursuit. When man hunts man. In just a moment, tonight's story. Thousands of men bothered with excessive falling hair due to infectious dandruff are finding wonderful relief from this condition by using a remarkable dandruff product called Double Dandarine. If this is your trouble and you want to avoid the embarrassment of hair that's thinning out, try Double Dandarine and see for yourself how amazingly effective it is. Double Dandarine actually works where many other methods fail because it does more than remove loose dandruff. It gets after the germ... Pityrosporum ovale, which many outstanding authorities say is a common cause of infectious dandruff. And it kills this dandruff-causing germ on contact. Completely safe to use, double dandrine is given truly remarkable results, even in some of the most stubborn cases of dandruff. So if infectious dandruff is causing your hair to fall out excessively, try dousing your scalp with double dandrine, a remarkable dandruff product that guarantees dandruff relief or your money back. Tomorrow, get Double Dandarine. Now, with Ben Wright starred as the famous Inspector Peter Black of Scotland Yard, we bring you tonight's story, Pursuit and the Man Who Died Late. Hello, Moffat. Oh, good afternoon, sir. I was just putting some papers in the file. Nice wedding? No, ghastly. Yeah. Mother-in-law cried, the father-in-law scowled. Any of these letters important? No, sir. Oh, that one's from the RAC. Your subscription is due. Oh, where the devil don't they send it to my home? I think, sir. You asked them to forward it to the yard. Oh, did I? No, oh, all right. Uh... Oh, blast those rates. They seem to go up every year. You know, it's more than a man can afford to keep a car these days. And that's a fact, sir. Uh, there's a message from Dr. Bishop, sir. He'd like you to give him a ring. Bishop? You know, there was a little chap at the church who reminded me of Bishop. <laughs> it turned out to be Lord Bagley. You know, Bagley's liver beans. Oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Oh, now, let's see what the dear old gizzard merchant wants. Where's the honeymoon going to be, sir? Oh, France, sir. He's going to spend his time rowing up and down the Seine. That'll be nice for his wife, sir. Won't it? This is Dr. Bishop speaking. Oh, hello, Doctor. Black here. Oh, Black, my dear fellow. How are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, how's your wife? Oh, doing quite nicely, thank you. Uh, look here. Would you mind coming down for a moment? I've got something terribly interesting to show you. Oh, well, I'm taking a holiday today. My brother's wedding. I see. How nice. Uh, all sorts of congratulations. He's the army chap, isn't he? Navy. Uh, of course. Uh, but I do wish you'd pop in for a moment. I'm so afraid someone else will get it. And it's your sort of thing. Oh. Alive or dead? Dead? Amazingly dead. I've never seen anything like it. You must see. It's the best one I've had for ages. <laughs> After three years, my new sister-in-law and I finally trapped my brother Reggie into marriage. He'd fought hard and well, but we had won. It had been a matter of principle. 
That and the fact that for some unaccountable reason, Vivian adored him. And so I had taken the day to see that Reggie would forever renounce his pressure, ba precious bachelor shoe. But fortified by several brandies and sodies, he had done so. On my way home, I dropped in at the yard, and a few moments later was on my way down to the lair of Scotland Yard's incredible pathologist, Dr. Bishop. Come in. Hello, Black. So glad you could come. I don't mind telling you, this is a red-letter day for me. Oh? I've got him in the examination room. My word, it's a topping case. Oh, really? I, uh, I suppose the fact that he's dead helps. Rather. Wait till I tell the chaps at the RCP. Now, have a look at this. Well? Hmm. Concussion? I thought you'd say that. No, my dear fellow, not at all. Here, see that? Where the head has been shaved and uh, the incision? Yes. I took this out of the brain. Hello? You'd think a bullet in the brain would kill a man, wouldn't you? Well, they've been known to. This one did, but it wasn't fired today. It had been in there for months, and he was brought in late this morning. Oh, now, look here. I thought you'd like it. Well, what about the blow on his head? That wouldn't have killed him. The bullet entered the frontal lobe, just above the hairline. See? Yes. Now, look at that. Oh. Abscess. Over a period of time, it eroded the left anterior artery. Here. And that caused his death? Oh. Today? Yes. Infection. It had to happen sooner or later. It did. Hmm. Is there any way of telling how long ago the man was shot? Mm, not definitely, I'm afraid, but several months, I'm sure. Well, uh, what about the blow on his head? Do you know anything about that? Happened this morning. They can tell you upstairs. Oh. Uh, who's taking care of it? Inspector Mallinson. All right, I'll get in touch with you later. Delighted. I say, um... Uh, yes, old boy? You, you, you couldn't be wrong about this, could you? My dear chap, really... Uh, no, no, yeah, yes, uh, yes, quite. Um, sorry. <laughs> I left Dr. Bishop once again huddled over the sheeted form on the examining table and went upstairs. The last time I had worked with Mallinson was when an attempt was made to blow up the yard. We'd become quite friendly since then. He was a dry, rather cynical man who loved his job and laughed at it at the same time. Hello, hello. Welcome to my digs. You look like a swank pot today. Funeral? No, wedding. Same thing. By the way, have you heard about yes, the Yes, I've, I've just seen it. It's yours, you know. I was just going to take the information over to your office. Oh, what happened? Dead man, Martin Tensley, 96 Brompton Road, took a walk in Hyde Park this morning. Mm -hmm. Chap hit him on the head and stole his wallet. That's all. It was very simple. Until the gizzard merchant started to mess about and found the bullet. Uh, what about the thief? Oh, we've got him. Holds fast to his story, though. Want to see him? Yes, I suppose I'd better. Hello, this is Inspector Mallison speaking. Would you bring Thomas Bokes to my office, please? Thank you. Have the relatives been notified? Not yet. I sent a man to the address, but there was nobody at home. Neighbor says Tansley's wife is away in Scotland with her two kids. We're trying to contact her. Oh. Well, this is going to be interesting. What, what, what do we charge our man with? Robbery or murder? Both, I suppose. The bishop insists that the blow had nothing to do with death. Didn't do Tensley any good, I'll bet. Hmm. Well, then the point seems to be when was the bullet fired, how long ago, who did it, and what? I've always admired your methods, sir. You seem to get right to the heart of the thing. Well, uh, oh, now, Chucky. Sorry. Come in. Oh, come in, folks. This is Chief Inspector Black. He'd like to ask you some questions. I told you what happened. I didn't kill no one. Which, my nasty fellow, is a double negative, meaning you did kill someone. Possibly Martin Tansley, eh? I didn't kill no one. Your name is Thomas Bokes? Yes. For how long had you known the deceased? I never met the bloke in my own life. Until this morning. What? You admit striking him down and robbing him in Hyde Park? Yes. 
Had you ever seen him before? No, never. Hmm. What did you hit him with? A cosh. It was a piece of solid rubber about a foot long. I see. Did he strike his head when he fell? It was on the grass. He didn't hit his head on nothing. Ooh, double negative. Now, you listen to me, Bugs. You're in serious trouble. The man you hit is dead. It wasn't me, did it? Think I don't know how to bash a bloke, Oh, yes, I'm sure you do. What I want to know is, did he appear perfectly normal when you first saw him? Did he walk or behave as though he was ill? Nah, looked all right to me. Too all right. That's why I cost him. Have you ever carried a gun? What do you take me for? Of course not. I see. All right, Constable, you can take him back. That's all for the time being. It was fairly obvious that Thomas Bokes was telling the truth. His file in criminal record office testified to a series of petty thefts and assaults. And we had no reason at the moment to believe that he would add murder to his craft. Therefore, we were faced with a unique situation. A man had been shot in the head. Exactly when, we did not know. He had lived for months with the bullet lodged in his brain. Now, was it an accident or murder? I felt that the answer to this and other questions could at least be answered in part by the dead man's wife, Ellen Tansley. Two days later, she was located and informed of her husband's death. She returned immediately to London, and I interviewed her soon after she had identified the body at her home in Brompton Road. I don't believe you. He wasn't shot. That man who hit Martin killed him. For some reason, you want me to think something else, but I won't. Now, Mrs. Tansley, we only want to find out the truth. We can't charge Bokes for something that we feel he didn't do. Now, if your husband was shot by accident, there's no need to be afraid to tell us. But he wasn't shot. He's never been shot. Why won't you believe me? You're asking me to believe that your husband was wounded in the head several months ago, and neither you nor he was aware of that fact? Why should I want to hide anything now? He's dead. You said, why should I want to hide anything now? Now, what did you mean by that? <sighs> nothing, nothing. Oh, I don't know what I mean. Please go away, please. Uh, Mrs. Tansley, I'm terribly sorry, but I must ask you once again. When was your husband shot? How did it happen? He wasn't, he wasn't. It never happened. He wasn't shot. You have lived together as man and wife during the past year without separation? <sighs> yes. And during that time, you state that he never received a bullet wound in his head? Never. I told you. There is no doubt in your mind that the man you identified at the yard is your husband. Yes, 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 he is. Oh, stop it, please don't. How long have you been married? Fifteen years. Why, why don't you please, I'm ghost. All right, Mrs. Tansley, I'm afraid I must ask you to come with me. I'm not satisfied with your story. If you wish to telephone your solicitor, I suggest that you do so. At once. <laughs> When you suffer from irregularity and take mineral oil for relief, chances are that you're getting only halfway relief. You see, irregularity is frequently accompanied by acid indigestion. And when this is the case, you need a preparation that combines laxative action with antacid action to bring you thorough relief. Now, plain mineral oil can't do this because it's powerless to combat the acid indigestion. But a remarkable preparation called Haley's M.O., combines the correct proportions of pure mineral oil with the finest milk of magnesia. As a result, Haley's M.O. gives you thorough relief. It not only relieves irregularity, but acid upset as well. And Haley's M.O. is so gentle that patients use it on their doctor's recommendation following delicate abdominal operations. When you see how much more Haley's M.O. does for you, you'll be amazed that its cost is only about the same as high-grade mineral oil. When you buy, ask for it by name. You can identify Haley's M.O. by the big blue letters M-O on the package. Now, the second act of Pursuit and the Man Who Died Late. I took Mrs. Tansley to the yard. Her statements were so unbelievable as to leave no other choice. 
I couldn't formally charge her with murder since murder had not yet been proven, but at least we needed an opportunity to ascertain the date and manner of the attack on Martin Tansley. Here I met with no success. Her declarations were unswerving. I don't care anymore. I don't care what you do to me. There's nothing else I can say. Martin was never shot in the head. I don't own a gun. Neither of us ever did. You're making it all up. I know you are. That a man could walk about with a bullet in his brain was one thing. But that his wife would testify that she had no knowledge of such a fact, that seemed impossible. I left her to confer with her solicitor, Mr. Bernard Lucky, and sat with Moffat in my office. She must have done it, sir. Otherwise, why lie about it? I don't know, Muffet. I've got a horrible feeling that she's telling the truth. After what she's been saying? Oh, I don't think so, sir. I know, I know. It's daft, but... Hmm. This is Dr. Bishop speaking. Oh, hello, Dr. Uh, Black here. Hello. Uh, how's that lovely case turning out? I wish I knew... Uh, look here, would you come up for a minute or two? The man's wife is here. I'm holding her for questioning. Good show. I don't know how you do it. I haven't done it. She insists that Tansley had never been shot, that it's ridiculous even to suggest it, because Tansley couldn't have hidden the fact even if he'd wanted to. What? Well, I have to assume that she's lying. But... I say, that's absolutely marvelous. It might have happened. Oh? I mean, I've heard of a case some poor old boy shot in the head and didn't know it. Oh, no, that can't be. Oh, yes. I'll pop up and tell you about it. Shan't be a sec. All right, now, how did it happen? Old boy, about 65. He took a walk. It was in the country, you know. Uh, some small boys were playing with a rifle. A bullet entered the right frontal lobe, but under the hair. Victim had a fine shock of hair, much like Tansley. He thought a bee had stung him. Went home, slight headache, no blood, nothing. In four hours or so, he'd forgotten all about it. Died seven months later. Just rolled over. Same thing. I'll be dashed. Uh, Moffat, ask Mrs. Tansley and Mr. Lockie to come in, would you? Right, sir. Mrs. Tansley? It might be, mightn't it? As a doctor, I'm never surprised at anything. One day I'll tell you I about... I think this has gone far enough, Inspector. You know as well as I do uh, that Mrs. Please, Tansley... will you sit down, Mr. Lockie? Uh, I believe you've met Dr. Bishop. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, Mrs. Tansley, as you know, you are not under arrest. There are just one or two more questions I must ask, and then you're free to leave. Hasn't she been through enough? I'm sorry. And now, Mrs. Tansley, you say that your husband was employed in an architectural capacity. Yes. Please, will you think very carefully before you answer? Can you recall that at any time on his return from the office he complained of a headache? An unusually severe headache? Uh, possibly, madam. A slight lump or contusion uh, under the hair. Uh, here. Had he been fighting with anyone? Ellen, you'd better tell them everything. It has nothing to do with this. Martin's dead. Why bring it up again? The children... Because what you know may be the reason for his death. Yes, I suppose so. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lockyer. My husband had been seeing another woman. Ah. Uh, when was that? About a year ago. He stopped seeing her? I found out, and he said he would stop because of the children. How long ago? A year ago. Oh. Now, to go back to my earlier question... I can only remember once. I, I think it was soon after he'd promised never to see that woman again. He came home. It was very late. He said he'd bumped his head. Ah. Uh, here, possibly? I don't remember. It may have been. He was quite drunk. Uh, did he tell you where he had been? No. But I knew. Oh. Well, then he continued to see this woman. I think so. I was never sure. Things were different after that. I didn't trust him. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, can you tell us, Mrs. Tansley, the woman's name? I don't know. I only knew there was someone else. Uh, Moffat, please. Yes, sir. Now, I must ask you to remember the date Chief as Inspector exactly Black as Office. possible. When your husband Inspector. returned home after uh, bumping oh, yes. his head. I don't know. Pretty Last year, I think. Well, it can make a tremendous uh, difference. Will you, Will you try to remember exactly uh, when... 
It was on a Saturday, I know, because he promised to take the children to the zoo on Sunday. Oh, I see. Right, thanks very much. Oh, one moment, please. Yes, Moffat? Physical laboratory, sir. Report on the bullet. 25 caliber from an Italian-made gun. Bernadelli automatic. Right. Uh, now, go on, Mrs. Tansley. You said you knew it was a Saturday a year ago. Yes. September or October? The end of September, I think, or the beginning of October. I'm sorry, oh, I... No, no, that's quite all right. You're being very helpful. Uh, Muffet, hand me the calendar, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, here you are, sir. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, September 1950. Ah, yes, the last Saturday in September was the 30th. And the first Saturday in October would have been the 7th. It was September... Then I, I remember now, because Martin didn't, didn't feel like writing out a check rent, which is due on the 2nd. I had to do it. Uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Tansley. Oh, uh, please forgive me for bringing you here. I hope you understand. Policemen make mistakes, too. May I go now? Oh, yes. And if it will help, I may say that whoever shot your husband will be caught and dealt with. I can promise you that. Huh. It won't make much difference to the children, will it? They won't have their father anymore. At least he loved them. We had something to go on. The date of the shooting. I was reasonably certain of that now. The type of weapon, an automatic, which we knew was because of its small size, used by women. And we had a possible motive. A spurned woman. We began to look for the killer. Black here. Offered, sir. I've got a list of the registered and licensed Bernadelli pistols. Ah, long list? I'm afraid so, sir. Well, you better get to work on it. Right, sir. Inspector Marinson. Oh, hello. Black speaking. I say, do you want a job? Not particularly, but for you, anything. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way. Run down to Tansley's office, Macintosh and Kenny. They're architects. You find out everything you can about Tansley. Question everybody. Cherchez la femme, eh? You speak French beautifully. Merci. See if you can do it. What? Find her. Oh, that. You know, I do so admire you, sir. You've no idea what a pleasure it is to... I went to the taxicab stand near Tansley's office, questioned the drivers who had been in the district for a year or more. One remembered something. He had driven Tansley to the corner of Haymarket and Shaftesbury Avenue several times. There, the deceased had got out and joined a woman. A young woman, rather simply dressed. The driver thought that she might be a shop girl. After that interview, I joined Moffat with his list of persons known to have owned Bernadelli Automatics. Four days later, we had narrowed our search down to six possible suspects. Two women and four men. We decided to question the woman to begin with. The first was a Miss Anna Patterson of 128 Graham Road, Hackney. Miss Patterson wasn't in, but the owner of the flats who lived on the premises assured us that she would return at six o'clock. It was then a quarter past five. We decided to wait. At a quarter to six, I rang through to the yard to see if Mallinson had turned up anything. Hello, sir. Good hunting. Where are you? Waiting for a woman. They never keep me waiting. Got some news for you. Oh? Nasty little sneak at Tansley's office didn't like the man and thought we ought to know about the woman Tansley was playing about with. Know any? Well, the nasty little sneak hated to sneak, but he ran into them one day, and Tansley introduced her. Anna Patterson. 128 Graham Road, Hackney. I got the address myself. Aren't you proud of me? Terribly. We're there now. Thanks, Mallinson. <laughs> She came in at five past six, a pretty, dark-haired girl, quite young, who seemed by her manner immediately to sense who we were. I asked to speak to her in her flat, and she led us upstairs. The place, well, it was much as I had expected, dark, cold, and lonely. What was it you wanted to see me about, please? You own a twenty-five caliber Bernadelli automatic pistol? Oh, no. According to the registration, you do. Oh, oh yes, I did, but, but not anymore. Uh -huh. Can you tell us what happened to it? Uh, I lost it, I think. When? I, I don't remember. I see. Do you know a man named Martin Tansley? No. I've never heard of that name. Oh, now, miss, I don't think this is going to do any good. Martin Tansley died last week of a bullet fired into his head a year ago. 
I think that you fired that bullet. No. No, I didn't. Well, I have a warrant to search your flat. Not that... Yes, sir. Uh, do you want to tell us why? Uh, I must warn you that anything you say will be taken down and given in evidence. No. I mean, I really don't know what you're talking about. Well, then I put it to you that Martin Tansley came to you and either for the first time spoke of his wife or informed you that she was aware of your relationship and that he wanted to break it off. In your anger, you shot him. <laughs> no. Where did it happen? A few days after he told me, Hackney Marsh, we'd gone out for a last drink. I, I begged him to divorce her and marry me. He said no. I shot at him. He fell down. I thought he was dead. I ran away. Then he rang me up a few days later. Was he quite drunk when you shot him? Yes. I don't think he remembered my shooting at him. He thought we'd had a fight, that was all. I was glad that I'd missed. And you continued to see each other? Yes, until a week or so ago. Then I read about his dying. That man in the park who hit him. Here it is, sir. Thank you. Uh, one shot fired. You didn't miss him when you fired, Miss Patterson. Oh, yes, I did. He was all right. I know he was. He must have been. No, Miss Patterson. He died from the effects of the bullet fired from this gun. The bullet you fired into his head. Oh, no. No, I don't believe you. Oh, you're lying. I didn't. I didn't. We took the girl back with us to the yard. She was committed for trial and later found guilty of murder. However, a recommendation of mercy was proposed, and she is now serving a 15-year sentence in Holloway. Pursuit. And the pursuit is ended. Pursuit is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis and written by Anthony Ellis. Music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Ben Wright stars as Inspector Peter Black with Raymond Lawrence as Sergeant Moffat. Featured in tonight's story were Betty Harford, Norma Varden, Edgar Barrier, Alec Harford, and William Johnstone. If you have to shave once a day, that's bad enough. But when you shave twice a day, the scrape and pull, scrape and pull, the continuous scrape and pull of a razor over the same places time and time again makes your face hurt and burn and sting in a way that's plain murder. Murder, that is, till you start using Mole brushless shaving cream. Then you'll discover that shaving even twice a day is a cinch. One reason for this is Molay's body, a real body that sets your whiskers up in a way no skimpy, watery cream can match and takes the painful scrape and pull right out of shaving. And Molay's abundance of soothing lanolin actually conditions your skin while you shave, leaves your face feeling refreshed and supple without a trace of burn or sting. Try Molay, the cream that means comfort even if you shave twice a day, even if you shave with cold water or hard water. Buy the brushless shaving cream that combines real body with abundant lanolin and takes the scrape and pull right out of shaving. Ask for M-O-L-L-E. Mole. We invite you to join us next week at this same time when Pursuit will bring you another dramatic story of the famous Inspector Peter Black of Scotland Yard, relentlessly hunting down those whose disordered passions breed violence and murder. Another story of man hunting man when we bring you Pursuit. Joe Walter speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.